Hey everybody, welcome to a new video of Amazing Max Stuff. This is our third part of our JIT Gen in-depth series. So this is the series in which we take a look at all the objects we can find inside JIT Gen and see how they can be used. So in the last episode we saw how to use the objects uh, greater than and lesser than operator, these boolean objects, and then also the modulo object. And we also introduced the param uh, object which allows us to communicate with the external patch. So for example if we create an, uh, an object called param time, we can connect a message time, we can send the message time followed by whatever number we want to the JIT gen and this number can be used inside our JIT gen. For example in this case we are using it to uh, basically offset the y coordinates generated by the norm object and to use this as uh, our generator of stripes. Okay, now in this episode we are going to take a look at two uh, very important objects which are the mix object and the smooth step object. So first of all let's get rid of all this stuff. Exactly. And let's create another input. Because uh, in gen we can create um, as many inputs as we want I don't know, I think there is actually a limit on how many inputs we can create, but uh, I think for practical purpose this is uh, as much as we want. And uh, we can then work with all these different inputs together. For example, by default, the JGen object just sums those two inputs together. Like this. So for example, if we connect something to the second input, let's actually do it. Let's create, uh, let's delete this. Let's create another JIT movie object. Let's give it a different file name. Like for example, blading, which is the video about the blading uh, skateboarder. And we connect it here to the second input. And if we connect the, the Q metro object to the JIT movie object, it will start up um, outputting uh, his, uh, his uh, frames. And we can see the videos summed up together in the JITP window. As you can see, they are being summed up, since inside GChan we simply create a sum operator. Now there is one thing to note, which is the matrix that is going to come out from this uh, GChan object is going to have uh, always the dimensions of the matrix that comes inside from the leftmost inlet, okay? So this video uh, is anyway 320 by 240, but let's make another example, for example, with the chicken sub uh, video, which is full HD. Uh, the video is, the matrix that is coming out from the JIT gen object is anyway going to be of the size, the dimension of the matrix that comes inside in the leftmost input, okay? And is also going to be of the type that comes inside in the leftmost input. For example, the JIT movie here will be of type char, but since this matrix is type float 32 and this goes in the leftmost input, the output matrix will also be float 32. So it will always be the same type of the matrix that comes in the leftmost input. It doesn't matter how many inputs we have. Okay, so let's load again the, the blading video. So this is important to remember. Everything gets kind of adapted to the dimension, type and playing count of the matrix that come inside the leftmost inlet. Okay, this is valid for all the outputs. Okay, cool. Now let's take a look at the object we mentioned before, which is the mix object. So the mix object works like this. It has three inputs. One input is uh, what will come out when the interpolation value is zero. The second input is what will come out when the interpolation value is one. And the third input is the interpolation factor between um, these two values. For example, let's uh, uh, use the param time as the interpolation factor. Now, since this value went well above 1, we are seeing kind of a glitch. But if we use a float number, we can go between 0 and 1. And on 0, it will give us the video that comes in from the leftmost input of the mix object. And if we go up to 1, it will give us the video that comes inside the, on, the right, on the central input of the mix object. And if we go in the values between, it will be a mixture of these two uh, videos, okay? So we can even automate them. For example, we can connect this to the time, and now this is well above one. But we can use, for example, this object that we saw last time, the modulo object. 
and we can basically make always this value going between 0 and 1. Uh, as you can see, this is a bit too fast because uh, uh, the value gets too big too fast, so we can actually make it very small, maybe a bit bigger, something like uh, that. Exactly. So we go slowly from the first video to the second video. Okay, so this is what the mix object does. For example, we could uh, get the x normalized coordinates and for every cell of our input matrix we could have a different mix value. So for example, uh, at the moment we had the same mix value for all the cells inside the matrix, right? But if we start to use the coordinates of every cell as a parameter for the mix, we can have a different value for every cell. For example, if we use the x coordinates, in this case, it will go from 0, which is the first video, to 1, which is the second video, right? We could also use the object that we saw last time, the greater than object, and for example, say greater than 0 0.5, and then we will have uh, on the first half, we will have the first video, on the second half, we will have the second video. Instead of saying 0 0.5, we could also use the parameter that comes out from our modulo object, uh, which goes from 0 to 1. Let's actually write it. We we'll start with, um, with the first video covering, with the second video covering uh, the whole thing and then being uh, slided on the right as long as the, uh, the, the value here increases, so from 0 to 1. Okay, if we use the epsilon value, then we will have a vertical vertical slide. It's pretty cool. Now we can introduce our second object that we are going to look at in this video, which is the smooth step object. So the smooth step object works like this. Let's use the let's use the x coordinates to take a look at how the smooth step object works. So if we say for example smooth step from 0 to 1 this is what we are going to see. So this value is going to be used for all the four planes of the matrix, as you can see in the JIT cell block object, because when we connect a single scalar value and not a vector to the output of a multi-plane matrix, this value is going to fill all the planes of the matrix, okay? If we would have done something like this, and connect it only to the first input, this will have filled only the first input. But since we are connecting directly to the output, it's filling all the, all the planes of the output matrix. Okay, so what is happening now? Uh, the smooth step object is creating a curve between 0 and 1. It's transforming our linear input, which will look like this. It's transforming it into a curve that starts at 0, and uh, makes this, uh, this curve, and then it goes, uh, uh, arrives at 1. When our when our input reaches the value 1. If we create, make this value smaller, so 0 0.5, the curve will start at 0 and reach 1 when uh, the input value is, uh, reaches, is greater than the second value that we input here, so 0 0.5. So when the x coordinates is greater than 0 0.5, this will become the value 1. And when it's uh, less than 0, than 0, or for example, if we write 0 0.2, then this will become the value uh, 0. So when it's less than the first value will give us a 0, and when it's greater than the second value will give us a 1. And in between these two numbers, for every input will give us a value that is forming a curve, okay, between 0 and 1. So this always gives in output values that are in between 0 and 1. Uh, we can visualize better this, for example, uh, doing something like this. We can use the epsilon coordinates. Let's go back with a smooth step between 0 and 1. And we can say, okay, when is the epsilon coordinates greater? No, uh, let's do like this. When is the epsilon coordinates greater than the value of the smooth step? Okay, so this is now the curve, because we can see that the epsilon value, we are, we are seeing here, when the epsilon coordinate is greater, then the smooth step value of the x coordinate between 0 and 1. So we can see that when this is 0, uh, the epsilon coordinate is not, is not greater. We can actually say greater or equal. Exactly. So this will be greater, uh, will be equal to 0. And then the epsilon coordinate here is greater than the value of the smooth step. 
and for every cell we can see where the epsilon value is greater than the, than the smooth step value. So we can see that it, it's actually making a curve that goes between 0 and 1 for every x, for every x coordinate. Okay, so every x coordinate is basically being tested against the, x, the y coordinate, and we can see the result of the smooth step function. For example, if we, say, if we set this between 0 0.2 and 1, we can see that this will be at 0 before 0 0.2, and then we'll arrive at 1, because then y is not greater than 1 here, this is why we see the black, and then it will be a 1 after that. For example, you can also say 0 0.6, okay, so this will be at 0 until 0 0.2, and then will be a 6, uh, will be a 1 after 0 0.6, and it will just be will just stay 1, okay? For example, it could be 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and the values in the between will all form this curve, okay? So, for example, we could use this value as the mix factor between these two videos, right? So, for example, we could do something like this. Let's put this here on the side. Let's create another norm with the smooth step. And we can use this smooth step between 0, uh, 0.4 and 0 0.6. And it will look like this. So the value will be 0 until 0 0.4. So we will see the video number 1. Then we'll have this curve until 0 0.6 from 0 to 1. We'll have these interpolation values. So these values are interpolated according to this curve. And then after the x coordinate is greater than 0 0.6, we will have the value 1. This is why we see the second video. For example, if we have 0 0.6 and 0 0.2, we will see uh, the two videos um, more mixed up in the middle because we have this curve that goes from 0 to 1 for the two videos. So it's making an interpolation between 0 and 1, but it's not a linear interpolation, it's a curve interpolation, a cubic interpolation or something like that. So for example, we can, um, we can keep this smaller, for example, between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. And then we could as well, for example, sum that, sum that to, to the time value here. Oh, okay, but we have to kind of rescale that. So scale 0 to 2 to 0 to 1 because, uh, because this is going up to be 0 to 2 and then we want to uh, actually go only between 0 and 1. So this we have to rescale uh, using the scale object, which by the way is exactly like the scale object inside max, also has the exponential curve. So nothing new on this side. Then we can, uh, in this way, we can um, make our mix point kind of move. Uh, across the two videos, but having a smooth uh, interpolation between the two videos, so not uh, not a rough uh, not a rough edge, not like a cut edge, but like having a smooth um, a smooth interpolation between the two videos. Pretty nice. Also, imagine that we could have two smooth step. So let's go back and visualize the smooth step value. So this is what we are actually seeing. So let's imagine that we will actually only have uh, a portion of white only in the middle and then have black on both sides. We can create another smooth step object that in this case will go so let's do like this. Then in this case will go between uh, 0 0.55 and 0 0.6. Exactly. So then if we do the reverse of that. So we take 1 minus that, this is what we see, and then we could multiply those two together in order to have only the middle portion of those two. Okay, so we basically have a 0.5, we have a 0.5 difference on either side, which then when we multiply together it gives us uh, this result. And we could, for example, use this as the mix value. And only have the only have the second video in this little column. For example, we could make the column bigger by increasing these uh, increasing this distance. Exactly. We could also uh, we could also make the um, the smoothness a bit less. Also by always keeping a distance of 0 0.5 uh, for the border. Okay, so hopefully this was not too confusing.
So, but this is just an example how we can use the smooth step function in a creative way. So I'm using the smooth step function a lot in my JITGen videos. Uh, it's very useful for a lot of stuff. We will see how to use this, for example, when working with uh, three-dimensional shapes as well. So using JIT mesh and JIT world and JIT gel mesh. And it's very useful when we want, for example, to have an interpolation between two values. Uh, that is not a linear interpolation. So I hope this was clear enough. And uh, we will go on in the next videos uh, by taking an in-depth look. To, to all the other objects that we still have to see inside JITGEN. Okay, so thank you very much for following. If you would like, you can visit my Patreon where I share a lot of patches and uh, insights. In any case, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video. Yeah, this would be great. So thank you very much for following and see you in the next video. Ciao.